about the current fashion? Um, I, lo I love all fashion. Any, any fashion is okay, cool. Yeah. I don't like um, I don't like high street fashion. So I don't like Primark and that. You know, because yeah, everybody's yeah. the same. I like people to be individual. Yeah. Are you wearing uh, vintage clothes? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I love it. The it's a 1960s suit made okay, by Crombie. It you a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and, and yeah, I love. Yeah, it's all vintage. My favourite item, I, I tell you what, I love this 19, this is 1960s beachwear from Hawaii. Yeah. I, I love that because it's just so bold and great. Um, but yeah, I love it, I love it all to be honest, I love it all. It's all crazy. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, vintage clothes because uh, I think um, it's original. Uh, I think it's something that no one's have. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm she super normally, normally uses, uh, well, basis. He's clothes in, in 2000 years, like this. And normally uses clothes with a lot of colors, combined with animal print yeah. and a lot of um, prints. <laughs> like, he can mix this with the... Uh, a lot of clothes. Yeah, pants with uh, flowers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she does things like this. What, what do you think about current fashion? I, I think actually they mix things that mm, they used to do in the past, like everything. They mix yeah. everything. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, based in the uh, 2000. Yeah, 70s, 80s. Yeah, uh, but it's, uh, a mix. it's everything. I'm Casper Delamere, owner of uh, Danley and Aspic. Uh, vintage style, nothing to do with fashion. <laughs> All the clothes in here were long, long since out of so-called fashion, but uh, style is very important. I like, uh, I, I like the style. I, I like things that were built to last. And for me, I like detail, and I like finding things and. and seeing things how things were made especially ha you know there was once upon a time when everything was handmade and whether it was made in the home or whether it was made in in, in, a, in a shop it was all handmade and even till the 1950s things were still being handmade it wasn't until the 1970s really that off the peg came came in into the uh, and then fast fashion which i don't like fast fast fashion is what's destroying this planet and vintage fashion is helping sustainability. It's uh, and also introducing people to to bygone style and seeing where where the styles that they're wearing today come from. Because every, everybody plunders from the past. Everybody takes when they run out when designers run out of ideas. They always press the button. It's like go back to the 1960s, and suddenly everything 60s, 60s, uh, or go back to the 70s, which is very popular now because the Gucci movie is coming out. So the 70s is is very popular. So uh, um, we all like to, to borrow or, or, or steal from the past, but here I'm giving I'm giving some things in my shop have never never been used, so they're having their first lease of life, and some things may have been used once or twice, and they're getting a new lease of life. They're finding a new a new you know a new home. Most modern modern day clothing, unless it's uh, by a, um, a very well known designer, won't have won't have any value, uh, and. People are now kind of pushing second second-hand uh, clothes because we've we've had the you know the, the big cl um, um, climate change debate and everything, and people are realising now that it, it, it's time to to ditch fast fashion because fast fashion it's just about turning quick turning turning things over very quickly and for a quick profit, and the, these the things don't last, and you wear them for three weeks they fall to pieces you go and buy another one and what, what happens to that thing you throw away it goes into landfill and you know whereas second-hand clothes you're, you're you're reusing something that that was all, already already bought so you're you're kind of helping helping the planet so to speak and uh, a lot of people are pushing pushing that with vintage fashion uh, you know it's it's sustainable fashion and also you got to in this shop you know you'll find something unique everything in here is is, is unique
it's quirky and it's yeah. hand it's hand painted and wow. sadly the artist who, who painted it she passed away in April I've just since discovered she has she had a, an art gallery and a boutique in, in Venice and this is her artwork and this is her trademark the rats and each one is individually painted by her you can only buy items from the shop in Venice you can't buy them anywhere else and the shop was never was, wasn't always open um, and she did everything on silk velvet some are print some are printed and some are paint are painted but all done by hand and no two designs are ever the same so whatever you buy from her is unique to you um, so I like I like that kind of uniqueness yeah. um, so that's one of my favorite pieces but I have a lot a lot of <laughs> I, <can laughs> I like everything you. in here <laughs> yeah. can I ask that well, how you find these clothes and oh that's my secret Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a good, I have a time. Yeah. I have a time machine, and once a week I go. I go back. In, <laughs> I go back in time. That's the most often asked question in my shop: is where do you find all your stuff? And I say, well, a good magician doesn't re reveal his magic. So, uh, yeah. you know, um, um, I, I have people who bring things to me. Maybe they they found something in their attic that belonged to their grandparents or, the, or their parents, and I never stop looking. I'm always looking in. in second-hand shops in other vintage shops um, anywhere I think I might be able to flea markets anywhere I might be able to find something and it's for me it's it's not about a, a, about trend for me it's about finding something that makes the customer go wow look at that and uh, you know and and something unique and uh, that you're not going to find everywhere else because what's what's happening at the moment is that most vintage shops are now being led, led by by trend and fashion because obviously you have to make money, but for me it's not just about the money. And uh, I like to I like people to come to my shop and say, "Wow, you're different to all the other all the other shops because you don't have this and you don't have that. And you don't have whereas everybody else has all the same. You could go into three or four different vintage shops and they all they all look very similar because yeah. they're selling a similar a thing in yeah. in all the shops. And for me that's boring, you know. And how you define the price of the product? Nothing, nothing has a set price. Yeah. So I can, I could put five hundred pounds on something and never sell it, and then I could put a hundred pounds on something and sell it in, in two seconds. Um, it's just how how I think something is worth, and if someone's prepared to pay the money, then then my my then I was right. It was worth that. You know, people always say to me, "Oh, how much is this worth?" And I said, "Well, it's only worth as much as a person is prepared to pay for it." So some things do have a a kind of a kind of value. Le you know, collectible labels they, they're always going to retain retain a value like Chanel Gucci those kind of things and des and designers certain designers will, will always retain a value but re you know regular things that are not branded it's what it's what you think it's worth that's that's yeah. how I, that's how I look at it yeah. and as long as the person is prepared to pay them pay the money then it's worth it yeah. if not then it's not <laughs> I'm Roy Luckett, the co-owner of the Vintage Showroom. How you start with all of these? Well, the Vintage Showroom yeah. came about, um, wow, well, um, it's been going for about 14 years now. And myself, Roy Luckett, and uh, Douglas Gunn, the business partners with, um, we we put this collection together mainly for uh, designers so they could come and reference pieces uh, for their forthcoming collections. Uh, we both were existing um, Portobello uh, clothing dealers uh, for many, many, many years and then we got together on this uh, as a project. And so, uh, and, and then uh, we had a store in Covent Garden which is sadly closed in the, in the last sort of six months um, but so we had that there for many years as well and it was a good drop in for people say from St Martins or other universities to drop in there but also uh, people could make a, an appointment to come to this side of the, of the business. So this uh, this unusual tweed is Donegal Tweed and uh, it, it was uh, basically a um, well we only got it as a two piece but it's probably from 
early 20th century so kind of maybe like uh, maybe 1910 around that time 1915 it's very very early tweed um, it's, it's quite it's, I mean it's like stood the test of time I'd say because it's been repaired and added on to make it a working you know a working jacket basically um, and it's kind of one of one of in our first book that we've done um, which is the uh, it's uh, in the archive of menswear, yeah. which is our first book. And um, it's just one of the pieces that we've retained over the years. And then this will go out on a rental for uh, maybe one or two months and then, and then come back to us. And it may be for fabric development or, or for the uh, you know, for the pattern maybe, or just, just the elements. It could be, you know, it could be that sort of one routine on the leather there. You know? Our colour splash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, again this section of the showroom is mainly dedicated to sort of uh, sort of college, university, Americana, really, yeah. um, and then you know certain other things that, that make the look right for the wall. Um, so yeah, that's no, it's quite interesting, and this kind of. Uh, mm. I mean, stylists seem to really like this this section. <laughs> when we talk about vintage clothing, then you know, it's kind of like the eighties become vintage, the nineties become vintage, the two yeah. thousands become vintage. It's kind of each uh, I don't know every ten years, then all of a sudden becomes that piece becomes vintage. Um, which for me isn't right, but, <laughs> but uh, being an older person, but you know, my, my sort of cut off point, I think maybe is early 80s, yeah, maybe 79 to 80, and you think that when before that was, yeah. uh, I perceived to be vintage, but you know, it's, the, the term's used very loosely. Yeah. Um, but as, as time moves on, pieces get rarer and rarer really you know yeah so, so maybe like 10 or 2, 20 years like over than what we wear today maybe being a vintage person or not yeah I mean you know <laughs> but things should last I mean if, if people uh, look after what they have it should go on and on and on you know but if you wear something a lot then eventually it may, you know, that was the whole thing with it originally. People wore something and then eventually they, or fashions change and they kind of get rid of it and then move on, you know, or they get too big for something and they get rid of it. But the thing is with like sustainability, you don't just want to throw things away. You, you, you want to reuse or repurpose them. So, uh, yeah, I think it's still going to be here for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Why you decide to work in the vintage showroom? Um, I was introduced to my boss via uh, my uncle. Yeah. Um, and it was basically a placement, and then from there I basically carried on working and because I was studying at the same time I was like oh it's a perfect place to kind of get yeah. inspiration for my own work and to understand the history of garments um, and also when do you get the opportunity to kind of like handle stuff like this up and close unless if you work in a, in a museum yeah so I was like that's pretty much a bonus so I kind of like started and stayed yeah. ever since when you look at collections and things it's very much kind of like oh uh, Everything seems new. Yeah. But when you cut, when, because I've been working here for a long time now, you're like, oh, this pocket comes from this pant, or this, you know, it comes from this military jacket. Uh, so it's kind of nice to see the historical side of something so, yeah. that is like transferred yeah. into something so contemporary and so modern. When you get it, how do you know that when is it from what is made for? Like, and that's research. So garments already have. 
like a label in there yeah. so from there that will basically influence you from when oh. the garment is from uh, when it was made buttons things you know things like this here yeah. that will give you an idea of where it's from and then from there you can research you also like understanding insignias or in garments you just have to look out for those small things and then that can give you the idea of where like garments have come from or how old they are sometimes garments don't have anything on them yeah uh, and then you have to kind of like look at something that's similar or go into other archives like uh, public archives maybe have a look at there yeah. um, but that's how we kind of generally start we have a look at kind of like what's inside the garment itself like the labeling and then we go from there and also you can tell from the cut and fit yeah of something true. um that's a good indicator um, could you just introduce us some piece that you, you like or something i like <laughs> yeah and the, the story oh wow yeah. uh i would like to say it's a lot of this sort of like technical stuff so all of these sort of like jackets and things because they of course this is a german flight jacket yeah. but the cool thing is this is reversible so you can turn it inside out the idea of like it just serves a different function you know and the idea that you can see it's had a life so it's been mended it's repaired like in parts uh, and it's created like a like a story of its own you know patches yeah. and things and it's kind of cool because it's yeah. stood the test of time you know you know with high fashion is uh, of course there's the the price element of it not everybody can afford it yeah. um so then of course they get ripped off and so on um i just think it's sad to lose um let's say the the idea is to replicate something they'll take something and replicate it and takes away the integrity of the original item which then means that whatever a consumer takes in they it's not really regarded as the same thing because it's throwaway um, but we are seeing a slow shift in terms of fast fashion and how they purchase and like the things like the fabric they use the idea of polyester and not or like uh, plastic fibers not being good for the climate they're changing that um, but yeah, it's kind of, it's a hard one because it's like, you can't just say uh, being anti fast fashion. Yeah. Uh, because you kind of, there is a place for it. Uh, it's like saying like organic food, for instance. Yeah. Not everybody can afford it, but you still need to eat. So it's hard.